Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video we'll be working through an example um, to discuss the frequency domain equivalent circuit. Um, so what does that mean? That means if I have a circuit given to me in the time domain, where in this case we see that we have a sinusoidal uh, current source given by this uh, cosine function here, and we see that we have time in this uh, function, so this is again indicating we're in the time domain, well, uh, what we may want to do is to uh, transform this, this circuit to the equivalent form in the frequency domain. And that will allow us to do the analysis much more easily because we can work with phasers um, when we're doing our analysis on a given circuit. So again, the first step, if we're given uh, a circuit in the time domain, such as this one right here, we want to uh, transition it into the frequency domain and then start the analysis. So then what's the process for doing that specifically? Um, so we basically want to be able to evaluate the impedance of each of the elements that we have. So we have, again, a capacitor, resistor, and inductor in this case. Um, so we know that in order for us to do that, we need to know what the frequency specifically of the circuit is that we're looking at. And so, so in order to do that, we would need to evaluate or look at the source, the current source here in this case being supplied. And we again know that if we are comparing this to the general form um, for the notation, we know that this 500T is telling us something about what the frequency is. Because this is telling us, uh, well, in thinking about the general form, we have cosine omega T uh, plus phi, where phi in this case is indicating the phase. I mean, that's, that's where our 20 degrees is coming from. Uh, T, of course, is time, and then omega here is the frequency of, of that source. So comparing this uh, general form of what a sinusoidal source would tell us, uh, we see that here our frequency omega is going to be equal to 500 hertz here. Okay, So we'll need to know that in order to be able to establish the, uh, the impedances of our other given elements here. And I should actually indicate this... Um, not quite hertz, but we're angular frequencies, so indicated as radians per second, all right? So now in order to, again, transition to the frequency domain, we basically want to establish um, impedances. I'll indicate this as ZC uh, for the cap uh, capacitor impedance, ZR for the resistor impedance, and ZL for the impedance of my inductor here. All right, so in each of these cases, we're just evaluating using the kind of standard a form for the impedance of each of these given elements. So in the case of the capacitor, uh, the impedance is indicated as 1 over omega c times negative j. You might also see this represented as just 1 over j omega c. It's the same thing because, again, remember j here is the imaginary term. So I, if I have j in the denominator, that's the same thing as just indicating a negative j in the numerator, more or less, in this case. All right. So here, we just basically kind of are plugging in our various quantities that we have. So again, here we'd have 1 over 500 is our frequency that is, was indicated by what we had in our current source times my capacitance, 100 microfarads, okay, times minus j. So just evaluating this expression here, uh, we'd come out with a quantity of minus j20. This is for our impedance, and again, impedance would be in units of ohms, right? So now for the inductor, the impedance of an inductor is given by the expression J omega L. Again, where omega here is the frequency, same frequency, and L, of course, is just the inductance. So plugging in, again, 200 millihenries for my inductor here with 500 uh, radians per second for my frequency, I would come up with a quantity here of just J100. And then, of course, for my, the impedance of my resistor, well, this is just always equal to the resistance value itself, which in this case is 4 mega ohms. I should indicate the impedance here for my inductor also as in terms of ohms. All right. So now, if we were just, you know, basically, if this was all we need, wanted to do, at least for the initial step in this process, transition this time domain circuit to the frequency domain, um, there would actually be maybe one other step, which is to convert this or to transform this time domain from the source into the frequency domain. So in order to do this, we'd basically be going through the phasor transform, which is to evaluate, which is, uh, we know that with the phasor transform, the phasor transform basically, we lose the information related to the frequency, 
Okay, so the, a phaser does not have any information about the frequency specifically. The phaser simply has information about the amplitude, which is what is given before the cosine function, and the phase, the phase angle, again, phi here we talked about, of 20 degrees. So in this case, the phaser form of what we have here indicated by the current, let me call this uh, IS, let's say, is equal to that. Well, in the frequency domain, IS would be given in its phasor form, which would just be 250 at an angle of 20 degrees. Okay, still in amps. All right. So now with these four quantities, I could basically just redraw the exact same circuit, but now I can show the impedances of each of these terms in the phasor form of the source. And from there, we could apply some standard analytical techniques to evaluate that circuit. But again, that's kind of all we wanted to cover right now in this video is just to illustrate again how we go from the time domain, which is given here, into the frequency domain, which simply means that I need to convert each of my passive elements to the, uh, their form in, the, in terms of their impedance, and that I need to transform the source into its phasor form as indicated here. And that's really all the steps we need to do for this uh, part of the process. So that's all for this video. I hope to see you on the next one.